get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See like like a beach If you find the same like right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise all right. Welcome, everybody. John Corkin here. I am the host of the Smart Business Revolution podcast. This is a live episode, going to be streaming it live on LinkedIn. And we're also going to put the recording up on Smart Business Revolution and also on Inspired Insider. Dr. Weiss, good morning. Thanks for having me. This will be on Inspired Insider. All right. And so, you know, I feel so privileged because every week I get on my show, twice a week, I actually get to talk to really smart CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs. I had the co-founder of Netflix on a while back, uh, YPO, EO, Activation Blizzard, Lending Tree, so many great founders and CEOs that I've talked to. Go check out the backlog, the back catalog, because there's some great episodes in there. And today is no exception. I also am the co-founder of Rise25, where we help connect B2B business owners to their ideal prospects. And today's guest is Sean Buck. He's the CEO and founder of the Newsletter Pro. He's been a friend for quite some time. We are a customer of his, of his and we're going to be talking about the best way to grow top line revenue and maximize sales. So we're going to be talking about nurture campaigns, how to nurture prospects. So it leads into sales, how to nurture clients that leads to greater retention, leads to upsells and referrals, all important issues. So be sure to pay attention because we're going to dive into that. And he knows a lot about this topic. Before we get to that, of course, this episode is brought to you by Rise25, where we help B2B business owners to get clients, referrals and strategic partnerships using our own special magic which is done for you podcasts and content marketing and if you're listening to this and you've ever been curious about starting a podcast and getting to talk to smart people every week shoot us an email some more support at rise25media.com or go to rise25media.com we'll be happy to tell you about how it works all right so sean so excited to have you back here again we've interviewed you before but you know this is a unique period in time right now we're recording this in may of 2021 we're a year into this global pandemic that's just been uh, really upended um, so much of commerce and, and businesses. Mm -hmm. And you're in a unique position where you really have your finger on the pulse. You got so many different customers um, and, and you've seen how they've been affected by this pandemic. So oh, yeah. how do you, how, you know, what sorts of changes have you seen taking place over the last year? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, I think with, when this hit, because it was all so like fresh, no one, no one had seen it in a hundred years. Right. Um, no one knew what to do at first it, from a business standpoint and, and almost it felt like businesses just kind of went in their own direction. Right. Like that was whatever it was. It was just, they're like, Hey, we're, we're going to just scatter and everyone just try to figure it out. Um, and, and actually an interesting, interesting uh, thing happened was that when it didn't end very quickly, um, you know, have a, a lot of gurus, uh, saw a huge increase in business. They saw an immediate fall off and then a huge increase in business as people looked for answers. What should they do? How do they solve this problem? How do they stay? How do they grow? How do they, you know, how do they, um, um, survive <laughs> depending on what part of the pandemic we were talking about? Um, you know, and, and what's next. Right. And so, as you said, now here we are a year later and, you know, the, the funny thing is, is, is that a lot has happened. Uh, a lot is coming up. It's going to be a real, real uh, interesting, interesting year, um, you know, next 12 months. But um, but a lot, a lot's happened and people went in very different directions still. I think it depends on the industry. Look, there were some industries that were winners. Uh, I want to, Sean, I want you to, to kind of elaborate on that. And I'm wondering you know, what type of clients do you serve and then talk a little bit because I'm sure every industry is affected a little bit differently. So the types of clients you serve and then what you saw uh, happen with with each of them. Well, the types of clients we serve, a lot of them are professional services, doctors, lawyers, chiropractors, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Uh, we also service a number of uh, kind of small business, uh, small businesses that are either service based or have some level of repeat business or really high ticket, you know, uh, those are our main industries. Of course, we have outliers like everybody else. Um, but you know, what we saw person, what we saw initially, uh, was just a panic from everybody. And that, and actually most people made the, the, one of the worst decisions they can make, which was uh, a lot, or a lot of people did was that they, they paused or stopped all marketing. 
Now, when you're closed, I I get it to some extent, right? Makes you sense know? then. Uh, makes makes a little sense then, right? You know, although I could I could make an argument for making a small adjustment and making sure you're still communicating at least on some level. But um, but then we saw something else really interesting happen. A few people came out to be winners. So let's talk about dentists for uh, as an example. Um, dentists um, they they closed, which which hurt. But then when they opened, they basically had a couple months worth of a backlog of patients, right, that they now normally would have done over those last two or three months. And now they had to try to fill them all in, get all caught up, get all the patients who were already scheduled for June or July or whenever they opened back up. Right. And, and they had to they so they were like going crazy with business. And so, you know what? A lot of, a lot of them did. They didn't do any marketing. Why? Because they were as busy as they could be. Right. We saw it would, it would continue forever. Well, I mean, yeah, and 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 that's the you know that is that what we saw was this fear and panic. Stop! Don't do a whole lot. Uh, put you know put on hold. Then we saw uh, 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 some businesses open back up and just be inundated with business, and others open up uh, and just struggle. You know, your bars, your nightclubs, not our customers, but you know, I know some people who own a few of those, and you know, like it's like and just struggle, struggle, struggle. Restaurants. Some did, some didn't. So, so what's going on is, is that, that the initial reaction was fear and stop everything. Okay. Then it was open back up. But if we don't have a lot of business, don't, don't start right back up on marketing because we don't have any business. Right. And if we are flooded with business, don't do marketing because we're flooded with business. Right. And, um, and now where we're at, if that's like in the beginning into fall, that was that was what we were seeing. Uh, not a, like for our own personal business, not a lot of new new clients coming on for the first four or five months. Sean, you know, I have a quick question on that for one yeah. second. Um, yeah. Because you know we we know that obviously you want to dig the well before you need it type of situation. And um, how do you advise people when they're calling to go against their instinct? Because really, what we're saying is you're going against your instinct. Things are shutting down. You shouldn't stop. Things are great. You shouldn't stop. How do you convey to them they should go against their instinct? Well, it's not go against your instinct. Yeah. Okay, right. So even if your gut's telling you, right, just because your gut is telling you to go one way, uh, I mean, we don't make decisions solely based off what our gut's telling us. We look at the facts. We look at the history. Um, uh, we look at how business works. I mean, look, business business isn't that complicated if you're willing to review what's already worked, what hasn't worked, you know, and, and put some systems and processes in place and some effort. It's not that, it, it really isn't that difficult. But, but if you're going to just listen to your gut, uh, you'll, you'll just, you'll always be small. Like it just, you're gonna, you're gonna struggle because you're gonna make the wrong decision because our guts are never hundred percent right. You know, that fear, fight or flight type of an idea. And so how do we convince them? You know, we, some of it, it, everyone's a little different. Some of it's data driven, right? You know, we're going to give them the data. Some of it's saying, hey, no, look, think about it. This is the point. If you, when you think about some of the some of the biggest companies uh, uh, right now, currently started in the Great Depression back in the 1930s, right? And they started there and, and, they, and they grew. My company started during the Great Recession, right? We had tremendous growth, right, during the Great Recession. So what was it? It wasn't because we were holding back. It's because... When it's it's kind of like what Warren Buffett says, when everyone else is being greedy, you know, you should be yeah. fearful. So when everyone else is saying, we don't need to market, we don't need to do any of this stuff. We don't need to have a podcast. We don't have a newsletter. We don't need to communicate. We're so busy. That's when you should be like, holy crap, I better be doing marketing. I better, That's when you can get great prices on that stuff. Even, it, you know, some places negotiate, right? That's where maybe you can buy ads at a discount. Facebook was at a discount there for a little bit, right? Um, you know, right. That's when, and then when people, uh, you know, when people are, are, are being uh, uh, fearful, that's, you know, that, that's when you're in, that's when you're in buying. So, right. They're being greedy. You're fearful, right. When they're, when they're being, uh, uh, fearful you're out there buying because that's where the opportunities are and so that's what i would tell you like that's how it works in the stock market that's how it works in business as well too uh when i see my competitors going right and they're all doing it i'm like well that's that probably sucks because most of them aren't that smart so let me go over here and look and see what's over here and, and probably go do that because i bet that makes more sense and so 
you know, I think when you kind of show them the examples, both in their industry, out of their industry, in other, uh, you know, in, in the stock market, things like that, you're like, look, this is this is what the smartest people on the planet tell you to go do. So go do it, you know, right? And, yeah. uh, and so that's, you know, I mean, not saying it always works. Uh, that fear talk, is talk about, and I know you're a, a, a big proponent of retention, keeping yeah. clients happy once you've retained them. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about that, particularly in the context of, the importance of retention in this economy that we're in. Yeah. Well, look right now, um, right now it's probably, I'd say one of the most important times, the, 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 some of the most important things you could be doing regardless of your business right now is first and foremost, take care of the existing customers, right? Take care of them, make sure they're great, great communication, provide value, um, of course, make offers where appropriate, but provide value plus offers. The reason being is that these are the guys who will keep you in business if if stuff goes bad again, if it gets hard again. We're gonna go rely on our existing, we're gonna rely on our existing customers, right? And we're gonna go do marketing, get new ones. But like we were doing marketing during the pandemic, uh, but new ones were hard to come by. We got some. It was it was difficult to get though, right? Uh, now we're we're getting some dividends from those leads we generated back then, and we're seeing we're seeing an increase in sales. But it took a little bit, right? And so so what I'm telling you is go after them, treat them well. They're the ones who pay your bills, right? These are the people who make your who make who make uh, your money, who keep you open. So take care of them. Put your systems and processes in place to maximize what you've already got. Now that means you've already got a lead. They didn't buy today. How do we maximize that lead, right? How do we make, how do we educate them, entertain them? How do we provide them with enough information to maximize that, that lead? And so, you know, maybe if we get a, a hundred leads and convert five normally, if we sit there and work on, on maximizing those leads and have that efficient system, maybe over the next 12 months, we convert another five of them, right? Well, that, that's a really good investment, right? If we then take our existing customers and we make sure they're happy and we decrease the churn, the number of cancellations that we get, right? And then maybe we sell them some more or we get them to buy a new product or service or whatever it is, right? Okay, that is maximizing what we've already got. And it is a lot cheaper to do than to go out and get brand new, right? It's easier, it's cheaper, more profitable. And so, yeah. Since Sean, you know, you are an expert at content. You've been doing this for a long time. And you mentioned the education and the entertaining pieces. Both yeah. are, are equally, maybe and arguably more important to entertain or they're not going to listen at all. But what are some ways that you have found to engage people with the newsletter from the entertainment side in the different industries? What is What has worked well to for the entertainment? Look, I think entertainment can be a lot of things, but like it, whether it's a newsletter or a podcast, right? The personality, right? So you guys, I, I know for a fact, you guys have people who love your your guys' stuff, like the stuff you guys put out and publish, right? Your podcast, your newsletter, stuff like that. They're fans, okay? That is entertainment on some level, right? Uh, the entertainment can be, it, it could just be people like personal interests. They like to know what's going on in everyone else's life, right? So it could be various personal interest stuff. Uh, I like to think about when, when you think about like um, the old, uh, 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 you know, Sunday newspaper, right? You, you would think about the newspaper. You had the comics and you had crossword puzzles, right? There were people who got the newspaper for like uh, years, but that was the only reason they got it was for those <laughs> things, right? You know, mm -hmm. and so you can put things like that in some of your printed media, if appropriate, like in a newsletter, that would be appropriate, right? To have like some funny memes at the end. Uh, yeah. you know, of your newsletter or something like that, right? Yeah, uh, I love how you do that, by the way. And you're nice. yeah, and yeah. we have people who you know that you get them and you put it at the end on purpose, by the way, right? Because then they have yeah. to kind of skim the rest of the content yeah. and they go there for the memes. And they're like, oh, that's a cool, interesting article. I'm gonna go right. read that one too, right? So, um, so you kind and of by the, by the way, so how do you go to a dentist and say, here's what you need? You need a newsletter that has a, a memes at the back. I'm sure you've got dentists who, or lawyers, law firms, or something like that, and say, no, 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 we're too professional. Our, our, our clients, they don't want to see that. That Why do you put that in there? Yeah, I'm like, look, I, I, you know, we get that sometimes, and I'm like, look, man, I, I don't know who you believe your clients are, but I, I think we should, you know, we got to have a talk about that because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that as a dentist, your uh, your perfect clients like a 
40 year old mom of three who's married, who makes a hundred, whose family makes a hundred thousand dollars a year or more. Right. Like, what do you, what do you think, you know, like, what do you think those people are reading and watching? Like, I mean, you know, like uh, most, most women I know who are like in that category, I mean, they like reality TV. They like, uh, you know, they like dramas. They like the crime, uh, you know, they like those crime podcasts and stuff. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, you know, what, it what goes you, back what you, to reflecting the the clan avatar and kind of their interests. Well, and it's like, look, dude, no one's no one wants no one's like, you know what? Hot damn! I hope I get an article about Invisalign today, man. I hope there's <laughs> a podcast on Invisalign. No right, one, not right. one soul on planet Earth, except maybe the guy who owns Invisalign, wants to see that. So right. why would you put that content out? You need their attention, and when there's so many things that can grab their attention. Damn, you better get it fast. And that means you better be entertaining, right? You better be entertaining, yeah. uh, you know, over anything else. Yeah, that's a great point. I would read um, an article on gingivitis. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what a few. What a few. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, you, you know, you have this great, um, well honed system. Um, Sean, through your company, um, honed over many years where, you know, you've got your book on the front end, people get a, a package in the mail. I encourage anyone, by the way, to go sign up the newsletter pro.com. Um, you can get a copy of your book. Do you want, what's the name of it? Yeah. Uh, the ultimate guide to newsletter marketing. Yeah. It, uh, it's fascinating copy. just to, to get it in the mail with the package that you get, and then you get the ongoing newsletter. But for those who are, um, a business owner who don't have that perfectly set up yet, where do you recommend they get started? How do you get started with this kind of nurturement? You know, I mean, a lot of times what it is you, you've got to find someone or a small group of people, right. That you're going to follow. So you're going to decide like, Hey, you know, uh, listen, I really like John Jeremy stuff. I really like Sean stuff and I like, uh, you know, Kim stuff or whatever. Right. And then you're going to follow those. You're going to follow those people, uh, because they are teaching what it is, whether it's free or paid, you know, there's a variety of, you know, you guys have free podcasts, I have free newsletters, things like that. Right. But they're there. You're going to follow those people to learn that stuff. Uh, or you're going to go buy books or courses. Like you've got to go study and learn it or you've got, that's one way. And most of the time to do that, that, that is one of the problems. Or you're going to have to find the experts in the field, right? If you want to do a podcast, like seriously, is your time uh, in your business, is like it better spent trying to figure out how to do a podcast or is it better spent hiring you guys uh, so that they have to spend this much time and it actually gets done? So that's the key, right? Like our clients spend less than 30 minutes a month to have their newsletter on average. Maybe it's an, you know, maybe an hour for some of them, maybe 15 minutes for others, right? But, but you know, on average, they're spending around 30 minutes a month and they get it done that's the important part. And so look, you can, you can, um, you can buy, you know, time with money. You can buy speed with money, right. You know, you can, you can do, you can do all, all these things, uh, to help improve your business. But we, sometimes we just get a little, we get, we either get greedy, uh, which is a, like, that's the, the ultimate like thing that kills a lot of businesses and, and ruins people, right? Greed, right? So we get greedy. We're like, oh man, I don't want to spend this extra X dollar because I can do it for 10% less. And you're like, well, first of all, you probably can't do it as well. Uh, even if you do it for 30% less, you're going to make so many mistakes. You're probably not going to get it done, which means you're actually just going to throw that money away. It's That's just garbage money. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, so hire the expert. You mean the time when I tried to fix something, the handyman, <laughs> and then yeah. I broke it, and then I had uh, I broke it, and then into paint. Yeah. No, I would never do that. My wife knows. I if there's a changing of a light bulb, I'm like hire someone. Yeah, God, yeah I don't yeah. even want to do that. Mm -hmm. but. Like the handyman comes twice a month, honey. Like I <laughs> exactly. put it on the list. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally. You end up spending more time and money in the end when it comes back around well, and you waste it like that's that's the problem like it's it's not even that you just spent it it's that it's wasted because you don't get any results because you don't know what you're doing you're not an expert like i could probably grab that little scraper and clean my teeth right <laughs> but uh, it, it goes into you know it's a it's sometimes a tough habit to break and john you know i read um who not how you're right um uh, ben hardy and, and dan sullivan which is exactly talking about this sean which is like don't think of how you're going to get just hire the who right to get it done for you yeah well yeah dan, dan uh sullivan told me one thing once like i uh know dan and and uh we were talking one time and i'm, I'm sure he said this before you know but um he said he's like uh 
uh, you know, she was asking me about my workload. And at that, at that time, you know, many years ago, like it was really, really high in that particular moment. And uh, I was like, yeah, man, I'm working way more hours than I want to at the moment. And he's like, why don't you hire someone? Why don't you like hire a CEO um, and, and step out of what you're, what you're doing? And I'm like, I don't know, probably cost me, I don't know, 200,000 bucks to hire that person. Right. And he's like, so, and I'm like, dude, that's a lot of money. And he's like, um, how, you know, you, you make over, you know, you you guys make over, you make over seven figures a year profit. Right. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, so realistically you could do nothing. Uh, even if you're just making a million, you could spend 200,000 and then do whatever you want with your time. You own your time again, or you can go kill yourself at, you know, 4,000 hours or 3000 hours a year and, uh, and make an extra 200,000 bucks. It's like, that sounds like, a very foolish decision. And I was like, Oh, sh you're right. And then <laughs> I <the> CEO. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, like, Hey, Sean, how did the pandemic affect you? Like what, right after it happened, what, what kind of decisions did you make in your business? Um, yeah. in the months that followed? Yeah. Well, initially, uh, initially it was really, really scary. Um, we had, we had, um, uh, for 25 days, from when the pandemic hit we because we have our clients all over the country uh, a few in other countries but mainly in the us and uh for 25 uh days we had an average of a hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year worth of revenue per day go on hold or cancel wow immediately um and some each, of those guys each day have, an average each, each day, day. Yeah, hundred and twenty thousand wow per day for 25 days. Wow. Yeah. Uh, wow. I was losing some sleep, <laughs> you know, um, you know, we were uh, like, we was still made it even if none of those customers came back, like we could have survived that. Um, and, you know? and what were you doing? Were you calling up these customers or your team calling up these customers and, and saying they were us, and then we were trying to get on the phone to save or to, to, I mean, like, if they were closed, like we were, we were like, all right, like we'll put you on hold. Yeah, like, some were dentists, do, right? Yeah, yeah, or they were closed, yeah, or, or whatever, whatever their business was. Like we we're like, okay, yeah. I mean, we were just, yeah, you know, we weren't being jerks about it. I know some some places were jerks about it, but like, um, you know, we we're put on hold, and then we had some just uh, went out of business, right? We had some, um, yeah, you know, honestly, we had some who were jerks who who were on hold under contract, and then you know, when it was time to come back, they were, they basically gave us the middle finger. Right. You know, um, but the vast majority of them all came back. Um, and so we ultimately, did, we ultimately did, did some, you recover, are you recover back from that now? Or? Yeah, yeah, we, we recovered back. We didn't recover by the end. We recovered by the end of the year, but, um, but now here, you know, now You're we back. are forward, right. We've recovered yeah. back from that. Uh, we're growing. We're, we're actually, uh, we're, we're having a good May. We have an okay April. April's hard for us. Like, uh, everyone's, you know, paying taxes and stuff like that. Like, yeah. you know, I just find that we just, you know, April and July slash early August as a, as an agency, those are, those are the, those are months that like, just, we don't do as well. We actually market harder, uh, mm -hmm. in those months. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, we, well, we didn't used to like in July, I used to just let it happen. And I was just like, forget it. Like, just do whatever we're doing. Don't, you know, nothing special, let it go. And I mean, we would, we would close uh, a third of what we would normally do in a July. And then we started marketing like hard. Like I, we were, I think we increased the budget like 50% from what we were spending in a normal month. Um, and, and then we were, we were still down, but we were actually only down about uh, usually about 10, 12% over a normal month. So we had to spend a lot more to get it but we didn't go down as far and the and the numbers worked so got know. it yeah yeah it makes sense and and you um didn't have uh people it, it, you, the, the fear or, or the problem there wasn't a problem with people being on vacation and completely missing your marketing messages entirely during July or August well no that's that's part of the reason that it's so hard everyone no one's yeah. paying attention right which is yeah. why we, we so we're like okay we got to market more so we try to get be smart about and then what we do like it like what we'll do is we'll put out uh we'll put out promotions right and um you know we'll do our best to find one that we think is gonna hit and then you know maybe if we would normally send uh you know five uh five uh emails and uh two direct mail pieces you know right 
we might send 10 emails and uh, over the course of a longer period of time and, you know, uh, and, you know, seven direct mail pieces, who knows, right? You know, we'll just increase it or we'll make more phone calls or whatever happens, you know, whatever, whatever it happens to be for that period. You know, you mentioned something before, Sean, about um, I tried to kick Jen out, but he came back. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but <laughs> always trying to kick so, him out. <laughs> some uh, people that you follow, you follow the people you respect, that you like, that you learn from. And I'm wondering some of the people you follow and what you've learned from them. You mentioned uh, Kim Walsh Phillips, um, yep. something that you've learned from her that you've taken to your business. And then any anyone else that you follow and respect and what you learn from them. Sure. Um, look, I... Uh, yeah. I, Kim, Kim, I love, she's amazing. I mean, just like the, the social media tips that I get from Kim are great. I, I, I like those, like when we're just talking or, or some of her content, right. You know, but like some of this behind the scenes stuff, I get to see like how she does, how she does webinars and stage presentations and stuff like, it's just, she's really, really, really good. Right. You know? Um, and it's, it's really interesting to watch her, watch her sell. Cause you, you just don't even know you're being, you're like, you're not even realize that she's selling anything. And then all of a sudden you're like, wow, I'm buying that. So like, she's amazing at it. Um, you know, uh, another mutual friend of all of ours is Dave D. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, there is a guy, you know, who does webinars, uh, selling from webinars or selling from the stage. Like, I don't know if there's a, a, a anyone better that I know of. Right. Um, you know, we, you know, so talked about, we talked about them. Um, and, uh, an, uh another guy, um, uh, who's also a mutual friend of, of, of all of ours, uh, Ollie Bilson. Uh, Ollie's amazing, right? Out of the UK. Great speaker, uh, Jeff. Yep, uh, great speaker, uh, knows his stuff uh, as well as anybody. And um, uh, I mean, and if you want to like build like a, a following basically, right? You know, like a, a, a herd or a community that is uh, to, to buy info products from you, like all, there's no one better to, to help you do that than Ollie, so. Yeah. That's great. Um, Sean, uh, wrapping things up, where can people go to learn more about you and connect with you? So uh, probably the best place to go, uh, just go to newsletterpro.com. Um, we're, we're, we've got uh, tons of free stuff on there. I mean, we've got 10 years worth of content literally up there. You can get uh, one of the books sent to you, uh, depending on the type of business you are, uh, either physically sent to you or digitally sent to you, uh, and no charge, uh, even if we physically send it to you. Um, and, uh, and yeah, or you can contact us, call us, whatever it is, but that would, that would probably be the best place to jump in and, uh, say hi and kind of, you know, get a copy of our newsletter, get into the universe. Excellent, Sean. Well, it's been a pleasure working with you and your team. Your team did such a great job and, uh, we appreciate you coming on today. Thanks so much. Thanks, Sean. Thanks guys. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. Like a beach if you find the same right